Monday. Hey y'all. Happy, beautiful Monday. I am sleepy. But your girl got some goals she gotta reach. So we're here. I pray that your weekend was phenomenal. Um, and I pray that you're having a great Monday. I pray that when you watch this video, it is an on-time message. I pray that it encourages you. I pray that it uh, gives you some strategy. Um, and you know, something to think about. So today I want to talk about jealousy. And it's interesting because today my students, my seniors are reading Macbeth. And there was this scene that all my class hit on all my classes hit on today. And if you've never read Macbeth, don't panic. You can still follow along. Um, Banquo is Macbeth's best friend. Did you hear that? That was my stomach. Oh my goodness, I need to get something to eat. <laughs> Banquo is Macbeth's best friend. And in the play, we're reading it, he says, like he has this moment where he's having like a monologue. And he's like, so all of your prophetic messages have come to pass and for some reason i feel like you cheated to get here he says but it's all good because the prophecy that was over my life is that although you're king my descendants will be king okay so again if you haven't read Macbeth, it's not a big deal i'm trying to like condense it very easily so at this point in the book Macbeth is king and his best friend is witnessing him become king and gaining all these titles and his best friend is like i'm pretty sure you cheated to get these things but it's all good because at the end of the day that crown will be in my family line and so i asked my students every senior class i asked them today i said who in here has ever been jealous of their best friend or of their partner or of their sibling or of someone that they are in close relationships with. And in each class, I want to say one to two people raise their hand. And it was interesting to me because I understand at my age that jealousy is something that we cannot avoid. It's something that will happen. It's something that does happen. It's something that we experience every day if we pay close attention because how do i know we experience this every day maybe it won't maybe it's not a long moment of jealousy and maybe it doesn't come in huge waves but every time you get to come into contact with someone else hopefully you're in spaces where you're coming into contact with people who have a little more than you who are a little more advanced than you who may be smarter and sharper and prettier and more handsome and more stylish and more fit Every time you have the privilege to come into contact with someone who is in a different place than you in life that maybe you aspire to be in, you experience a moment of comparison, um, which if not checked on contact can become jealousy. I think I've said this before, but one of my favorite quotes is like, uh, jealousy starts off as admiration. And that's true. Before we're jealous, we admire what we see. And if we don't, address it and acknowledge that wow this is something i can obtain it will turn into jealousy which we'll talk about in this video so only like two students raised their hand and what it triggered for me is that this is a topic that we don't discuss we're not willing to admit that we experience it we're not willing to explore it and with social media allowing us to see into the lives of so many people um, what they're doing moment by moment, what they're eating, who they're hanging with, what their friends look like, what their wardrobe looks like, how much money they have, how successful they are, um, businesses that they may have created, degrees they may have obtained, um, opportunities they've come into contact with. Jealousy is something that I believe is becoming more of a frequent emotion we experience. And so it was extremely interesting to me that in a day and age where social media has um, increased the willingness to say I have experienced moment of jealousy especially with those that I am closest to has decreased and so there's some uh, 
inability to admit this emotion is happening, which also means we don't or we're not equipped to respond to it because when you're equipped to deal with something, you don't mind saying, yeah, I experienced that. I struggle with that. But I also have strategy to overcome that. And so I want to talk about jealousy today really quickly. And I pray, like like I said, I pray that this encourages you. I pray that you could be introspective um, and look at yourself and maybe say, hmm, I do experience this. Whether it's with your romantic partner, whether it's with your friends, whether it's at work, whether it's um, with your siblings, so that we can be more equipped to dealing with it. Okay, so when I looked up what jealousy was, it said that the number one root of jealousy was the lack of self-confidence. Um, and then it goes on to say that the main cause <clears throat> of this is that you are doubting your abilities and your skill set. It um, also is simply a poor self-image. You have a poor self-image, a poor image of yourself, um, feeling extremely insecure within yourself and the relationship that you are experiencing this in. So whether it's you and your manager, you and your boss, you and your friend, you and your cousin, you and your lover, you and your sibling, whatever it is, there's a struggle in this relationship where you feel inadequate. Okay. And so, um, I wanted to bring up an example from the word of God really quickly. So in Genesis 37, <clears throat> I just, I'm going to read this. Um, and if you have your Bible, you can pause it and you can follow along. It says, so Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, um, he often tended his father's flock. He worked for his half brothers, the sons of his fathers and wives. I'm going to jump down a little bit to verse three. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because, so this is the reason, Joseph had been born to him in his old age. Okay. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph. The gift was a beautiful robe, but his brother's hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a single kind word about him. So because of this favoritism, which started in the home, which before it even manifested in the home, this favoritism took root in my opinion, in Jacob's life, because during a time where he didn't even think he could have children, God was a God blessed him with a son. So before Joseph even was conceived, like not even conceived, before he was born, there was some favoritism in Jacob's spirit about this son of his, not because he didn't like his other sons, not because, you know, he was more handsome, but simply like, wow, God, what a gift that you would give me this son in OH. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because sometimes when we're jealous of something, we don't pay attention to the root or maybe the work that someone had to do to get what they have obtained, maybe the blessing behind it. We just go with the rational thoughts. And so as I was reading this, because I've always read the story, heard the story, and even thought of the story simply as the brothers being jealous, but never from the perspective of like, well, why did this jealousy seed blossom in this, in this family? It just stood out to me today like, okay, he favored Joseph because he was born at his old age. So one day Jacob had the robe made for him. This in turn caused the brothers to hate him and they couldn't say one kind word about him. One night, Joseph had a dream and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brother responded, so you think you're going to, you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and the way he talked about it. So then Joseph tells his father, his father kind of scowls him, but also um, scolds him, but also has like this curiosity brewing in him that will, will Joseph one day be king, right? So that's the first that's the like foundation. That's the story. Joseph had a dream that he would lead. He would be king over his brothers. They could not really hear this dream for what it was because they had already had resentment and issues with Joseph because his father showed him favoritism. Joseph didn't do anything to receive favoritism except be born to his dad in old age. Jos Jacob got him the robe made. Jacob showed favoritism towards him. Yet Joseph was paying for this treatment 
in the relationships that he had with his brother. And so, like a typical young boy who is in a circle of men, he shared his dream with them. And then he shared the second dream with them. And they further resented him because of this. All right, moving on to verse 18. So, basically, they're traveling, right, running errands or whatever. And in verse 18, it says, when Joseph's brothers saw him coming, because Joseph was kind of like, I don't want to say left behind, but he wasn't with his brothers, so he went looking for them. And when he found him, this is where we are. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Verse 19, here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these sterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we will see what becomes of his dreams. So while I was reading this, okay, what I was thinking was in verse 19 where it says, here comes the dreamer. The first thing I thought was, why and who? First of all, why couldn't you all be dreamers? Where in the word of God did it say that Joseph had a dream and he was the only one amongst his brothers who was capable of having a dream? There's a disconnect. And I think the reason why I'm using this as an example is because I want to encourage someone today that when someone shares their vision with you, when someone shares their dreams with you, be careful not to assume that they are the only one who can experience this. I have had to learn in growing up, and I still practice this in my thinking, that if God is doing something for someone else, don't talk about my ashy elbow, if God is doing something for someone else, he can do the same thing, if not more, for me. If anything, I believe that the experiences that other people get to have with God, the blessings that God showers them with, exposes me to different intricate characteristics of God, right? So I am not a mother yet. But the fact that God has allowed many women in my life to have safe, natural labor or carry full term, these different things that I'm allowing him to see to come to pass helps me sharpen my prayer life for the things I want, right? God, I didn't know that it was within your abilities to do X, Y, and Z. God, I didn't know that this was something I could ask you for. The only reason I was exposed to this is because you allowed someone else to tap into it. And so instead of his brothers being like, yo, Joseph, you gonna be king? So that mean I'm gonna be royalty, right? Like if Brandy and Kelly was like, I'm rich. Granted, my siblings probably be like, I'm gonna get you a hundred dollars, Leisha, I'm gonna get you a hundred dollars. I would be like, wait, so you rich? So like now you can pay me back? And so like maybe you could loan me? The blessings carry, right? Even if they were selfish, the fact that my sibling was able to come across wealth, maybe I could just glean and that can also come to pass for me. They were able to identify the fact that Joseph was a dreamer, that he had the ability to dream, that God was able to show him his future through dreaming, but they never took a moment to get out of their irrational feelings to say, well, maybe I should ask God to show me what my future looks like in dream." Maybe I can ask God, God, can you give me a dream of what my life looks like? If my brother's going to be king, what shall I be? What shall my nephews be? What shall my sons become? Right? I definitely said that grammatically incorrect. I told y'all I was tired. Bear with me. And so they said, here comes the dreamer. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm tying it up. I'm not going to be long. I want to tell someone today two things. Okay. The first thing is that. If you see it in someone else's life, okay, first of all, do not ignore the fact that it may have come with a cost. So we don't see Joseph paying for what it will cost for him to become king in this scripture. However, if you continue reading, Joseph goes through hell and high waters. He is lied on, disrespected. I mean, I always talk about Joseph because I just love him. I love everybody in the Bible. But I love when I like can understand and like appreciate a person's journey, right? Joseph did not become king just by sitting back, drinking pineapple juice on a donut in the pool. Joseph was mistreated. And not everyone will go through that to become king, yet everyone wants to become king. Ain't that something, right? 
Joseph went through hell and high waters and then became king. His dream and the prophecy then came to pass after he went through some things that I don't even know if his brothers would have been able to endure. But nonetheless, when you see someone with something that you aspire to have, be careful not to assume that it didn't cost them something. Be careful to just assume that it was given to them. Okay? Like, you actually have to ask yourself, like, I'm, I've been in the gym, I've been telling you all that. And sometimes when I'm in the gym and I'm working out and I see other people in there and I'm like, man, you've been here for two weeks straight with me. I wonder when you started right? Because one day I'm going to be the person in the gym that's more in shape and there's going to be a new person in the gym and they're going to look at me and think, oh, why is she even here? Not knowing that I've been here for a year now, that I started where you are. And the difference between where you are and where I am is that I have a year of waking up at this time and saying no to this food and sacrificing this and consistency here to get where I am. And so when we make the mistake of just being jealous of what someone has or being jealous about what we see and not considering the cost or not considering the backstory, we do ourselves a disservice and we also erase what comes with this person that really at the root of jealousy we admire, but we didn't admire in the correct way. And so now it becomes unchecked and it becomes jealousy, okay? So that's the first thing. Secondly, the second thing is, why would you assume that it's not available to you? That is the thought process that you have to, and I actually am going to have three things. That is the thought process that you have to ask yourself. Whether it's a man, a woman, a marriage, a child. I mean, we see it all in the Bible. Why would you accept the thought that what you want, as long as it is in alignment with the word of God and what he has for your life, why wouldn't he give it to you, right? Like, God is so for you that the things you want, as long as it means you well, and again, it is in the will for your life, God is not out here like, nah, bro, I want you to struggle all your life. Struggle will come. Struggle will come. But so will strategy to get out of that. I believe that. I believe that God gives us an abundance of knowledge. We perish for lack of understanding. Knowledge of and strategy available to you that you have to decide to take up on. So I, I challenge someone today to come against the thought that what someone else has is not within reach for you. It is. It is within reach for you. You can have the very things that you admire. You don't have to be jealous, right? Even in our romantic relationships, if we're going to keep it all the way funky, right? We're going to see people who are who are prettier, but that doesn't take away from how pretty you are. We're going to see men who are more handsome, more in shape, but your value is not in the tangible assets. Does that mean you neglect your tangible assets and the things we see in the physical appearance? No, but understand that that's not where your value comes from. And I'm, I'm keeping it 100 on here. If there's something about a person you admire, you have to sit down and say to yourself, I want that. I'm going to have that. Right? If Alicia wants a don 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 don, I'm trying to say don 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 don. <laughs> you better get in the gym and do some glute exercises. If you want a flat stomach, okay, make better food choices. Do those sit ups. It's available to you, right? And lastly, the fact that the world says that the root of jealousy is low self confidence if you are a believer and you are watching this hear me when i say this your confidence is not found in your um accolades and the things that you can do in your own strength your confidence is found in christ when i'm really feeling insecure and i'm on my rocker there is no compliment that can make me feel better like and that's i'm keeping it 100 because people will feed you compliments all day something about the word of God and God telling you like, girl, you, you're beautiful. You're made in my image. You're excellence. And everything that I do, I do well. And when I saw you, I said, well done. And I spent intricate time creating you. And I know the number of hairs on your head. And I know that because you fear the Lord, you are worthy to be praised. And there is an aroma that you carry. And there is something about you that is unique to you. And something about your prayers gets my attention. Woo! <laughs> that 
that is affirming, okay? That makes you feel like I don't have to hate my sister because God thinks the world of me. God adores me. God is crazy about me. And the love he has for me is not conditional. It's not based on my style. It's not based on my size. It's not based on my degrees. It's not based on what I can say. It's not based in my looks. It's based in this relationship that him and I have that's unique, that's private, that's intimate, that's special, and that's sweet. And so... I say this to say if you struggle with jealousy for whatever, because social media will have you out here desiring things that you don't even need. You don't even need. And that's another topic for another day. Social media will have you wanting things that literally will disturb your peace, will come and cause chaos in your life. You better be thankful you don't have that portion, honey. Trust me. When you come into contact with jealousy, you need to acknowledge it. You cannot change what you won't acknowledge, what you won't confront, what you won't call what it is, right? I can't call cheat day, cheat day, unless I'm acknowledging that I'm cheating in the food options. You can't address jealousy if you're not going to say, oh, I feel inadequate right now. I feel like my foundation is being uprooted. I feel like something about you makes me feel unworthy. Something about this space makes me feel inadequate and less than. Because then you start to address those irrational thoughts. Then you can actually say, I am smart. I am equipped. I am beautiful. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am not overlooked. I will not be alone on my life. I will not die because of this. You can address the irrational thoughts and you can correct them. But you cannot deal with jealousy if you won't call it what it is. And so when I was talking to my seniors very briefly today, I just thought about like, I don't want us to have a generation that struggles privately with jealousy. Instead, we have to acknowledge that it's normal, that it's going to happen, that in the word of God, it happened, that it's not a stranger to our intimate relationships and the relationships we don't even know. And so I've been on here way longer than I should. I pray that this encourages you. Um, I pray that this shifts something for you and that you can be free from feeling like you're not enough and that the things you want you can't have and that you have to hate the next person because they have them. No, baby girl or oh, baby boy, let that inspire you. Let other people's blessings say, oh, okay. Oh, you got a new Maserati? I'm about to go break up my Maserati. Not to copy, but to stretch your prayer life and your exposure. I love seeing new things because I'm like, man, I didn't even think to ask for that. I didn't even think to ask for that. Thank you, God, for showing me that if this child of God can get it, then why can't this child of God get it? I love you all, and I will see you in the next vlog.